What's going on guys? Another uh, another day, hopefully another lock. Um, here we go. Uh, last night, paired the Clown 100% head ultra male, male to the Mojave or Pastave double head ultra male clown female. If you guys were familiar with this lock before, uh, this girl was like 860 grams or something and she was building follicles. So I was like, all right, cool. Let's throw the mail in. She wasn't eating very well for me. Uh, threw the mail in, got a lock, which is right out about a month ago. And um, through, like I said, through the mail in, got a lock, got a really good lock, came out, and she took, I think, seven or eight large adult ASF the following um, month. So now, again, it's time for another lock. And um, hopefully she locks this guy again right now, and she'll go back on food again. So let's see. Yep, look at that. Right there, guys. All right guys, so today we have two males with tubs. I've already checked one just because I couldn't wait, um, but I'll go ahead and show him off anyway, even though I know he's not locked up. So right here we have the Pastave Ultra Male. Um, she is being currently paired, as you see, 11 23 was her last lock, so almost right at 30 days, like 29 days um, from her last lock. And I threw him in earlier today, and um, he is a clown head Ultra Male from Ozzy. And um, she had about 15 millimeter follicles, so pretty cool and she's slamming food so we'll see if she's locked up and just like that she is so that's very very cool he's a beast i'm telling you that male right there gets the job done boy he lays the hammer <laughs> lays the hammer anyway next up like i said i've already checked here uh this is the hypo 100 percent clown female uh that we recently picked up and she is in the tub right now <clears throat> with the uh with the uh, spot nose Yellow Belly Stranger, Het Clown, Paw Set Monsoon Boy that we hope proves Het Monsoon. Definitely looks like he's going to prove, but this is, uh, she's due for another lock. He's still playing hooky. Um, uh, he's locked once with the uh, Pastel Clown female right here that's hunkered down, but I'm sure it wasn't a very good lock just because it was his first ever lock. Um, and he's not really, quote unquote, into it. So he's been in there for right at two days now. I'll leave him in there until the third day, let him get the full three days. He locks her cool. If not, then he'll go back into his tub, um, probably take three or four meals over the next two to three weeks, and um, then he'll probably get rotated back into this girl's tub um, just because she's building and we'll need another lock by then. So that's uh, this segment, I guess you could say, of what we have locked up. The uh, Pastel Cypress Stranger Hit Puzzle Mill that's up here, he is currently in shed, probably shed out tomorrow. And um, probably go ahead and throw him in with uh, probably this Pewter Phantom Mojave head puzzle that's right here. Um, she is uh, building some follicles. She's bowl wrapping. Um, either that or we're going to throw him back in with the Cine head puzzle. She's due for her second lock. Um, so pretty exciting stuff here. Uh, we're really just now getting started with the pairings uh, for the 2024 season. So stay tuned and I'm sure there'll be lots of more uh, clips like this with some cool locks. All right, what's going on guys? This is going to be a, uh, another pairing clip. So we did a YouTube live last night, um, ultrasounding the puzzle project and uh, basically trying to figure out what our next move was as far as the Pastel Cypress Stranger Hit Puzzle Mail. Um, he's due for a lock. He's been, you know, uh, had a shed cycle. So he's been out for about two weeks, um, had plenty of time. And like I said, we just ultrasounded a bunch of the puzzle girls or the Hit Puzzle girls to figure out who needs the next lock. And of course, the Cinnamon Hit Puzzle the girl that locked previously, um, he got paired in with her because she had right about 12 millimeter follicles, or give or take. Um, so we're gonna see if they're locked up. And they are, very, very cool. It's a good lock right there, guys. See you in the next one. Yo, what's going on, guys? This is Keaton with Hook'em Rolls, and this is going to be the first ever clip filmed on the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. So I figured, you know, uh, I haven't been on camera in a while. Um, it's really cold in Texas, as you see. You got a hoodie on. Um, we're down in like the 30s now, uh, so pretty chilly here. Hope you all, hope everybody in this that's going to see this video had a uh, happy holidays. You know, everything was it was great. But we're going to go ahead and we are going to turn this screen over, and we're going to take a look at what we have. So, like I said, this is first ever clip. So you guys can let me know. We're recording in 4K 30. Um, I've already got a few clips that I filmed with locks with this, um, so this isn't um, going to be a complete video with the DJ Osmo, but it, a good chunk of it will be have done with this uh, this right here. So 
Um, if you're familiar, if you guys follow me on Instagram, if you don't, go check it out. I post a lot of stuff on there too. I try to, the only two platforms I focus on as of now are Instagram and YouTube. So like I said, go give me a follow, Hook'em Royals on Insta. Uh, last night, Ultrasound of the Few Females I was going to go live on YouTube, but like I said, I've already been live a bunch on ultrasounding and I didn't really want to bore you guys with a you know 20 minute clip of ultrasounding females. But we ultrasounded a handful of females for the um, clown project. Um, this male right over here, his tub's right here. You can see he's the uh, male yellow belly spot nose stranger, het clown pulse at monsoon. And um, like I said, ultrasounded every female we had in the clown project. So ultrasounded the uh, lesser clown down here. Ultrasounded the inchy DG, which we already did the other day, just to check her again. Uh, also ultrasounded the pastel clown female. Uh, the black pastel pied posset clown female, um, the hypo hit clown female, but she's already been paired. Uh, we're gonna, I've made an executive decision. The uh, hypo hit clown is going to strictly go to the uh, pastel super GHI chocolate hit clown. The only reason being, he was the first male that actually locked her to begin with. Um, so there's no reason in you know playing who's your daddy on that clutch because that stranger has got a, a ton of females to go to. Um, so we're not even going to worry about it. Um, the most, I guess, powerful right now could be this girl right here, which she actually ultrasound on her as well. She's got some good follicles, um, but we're going to let her um, keep eating. She's still on food right now. So I, I will give you guys a little tip. I kind of notice something in my females. Whenever I start breeding, um, early, early on, you know, everybody's pounding food, pounding food, pounding food. When people start, or not people, when the females start getting around the 15 to 20 millimeter mark without a lock, I notice a shift, okay? The shift being, um, they kind of go off food for me. They almost go into a, um, a mode where they just don't want to be messed with, they don't want to eat, you know, they sit back on the either the warm side of the tub in the days and the cold side of the tub in the evening, or they're completely engulfed in the cold side, um, and they don't want to eat food. So, you know, at that point, you have to give them a lock to get them going, or at the end of the day, they probably will not go for you. There's a very high chance at that point if they're not eating, they're not going to produce enough follicles. Um, to be able to push that, you know, those follicles into actual eggs. So, right now she is in the stage of eating heavily. She's around 10 millimeters. Um, so, you know, she's still probably got another 10 or so millimeters to go before she kind of hits that wall where she's going to need some, you know, a lot to get some more food in her. Um, so, we're going to let her do her thing. She's on schedule right now. Um, she laid last year for us, she laid seven good eggs. Um, no monsoons. So, right now, technically, she's not proven at monsoon. Uh, but I have, we have really good faith that she will, just because, uh, I'll show you guys, she's got some really good markers on her, I'm trying to figure out this gimbal, how this works, but I'm not going to mess with her too much, but she is a pastel red stripe het monsoon, um, so that yellow belly spot nose stranger het clown posse monsoon boy that we have is definitely going to be taking this girl, so that being said, I don't want to overload him, even though this hypo het clown female is powerful, we're not really, um, you know, the hypo was just kind of a side project for us this season. We didn't really go heavy in it. We didn't buy any double visual females. You know, we didn't really hit it hard. So anything that is hypo here is just kind of a side project. That being said, uh, why not go ahead and throw this male in right here, which is the pastel super GHI chocolate head clown. I mean, he's still a very powerful male. You know, last season we missed out on um, hitting the visual GHI chocolate clown that didn't have pastel in it. We had a few of them with pastel. Um, this girl's actually doing well. I wanted to show her off. So this is one of the females from the clutch right here. But she was one of the ones that we had to force feed. And she's actually taking meals on her own now. But as you see, pastel really blows this combo out. Like, it's still a beautiful snake. She's still very beautiful. But she's not dark. You know, when you think of a chocolate GHI clown, you think of a very dark animal. Well, with the pastel... You know, it didn't do that. So this year, we're really hoping um, to push the hypo project forward with this girl. She's been heavily on the cold side. She's about about 15 millimeter follicles. She's uh, doing well. This is her second lock with the Pastel Super GHI Chocolate Pet Clown. And we're hoping that we can hit two or three um, GHI Chocolate Clown, either males or females, and they'll all be 100% at hypo, which would be amazing. But anyway, like I said, we have a lot of females um, in the clown project this season, so it does not hurt 
um, us personally to just go ahead and, and, you know, since we do have that other male and he hasn't sold yet, to kind of pair him up to a few females that necessarily aren't the top of the project list. So, um, ultrasound all these girls I just showed you before, and we came over here to this rack. We ultrasounded the Hyo D Fire Clown. This is the Aussie line animal. So the, the male, the sire that produced this female was a direct Aussie lineage snake. Um, so pretty cool there, very bright female. And we also also ultrasounded this Inchy Hyo D Het Clown female. She's also building some nice follicles as you see. She's very, very pretty. Very, very pretty. But she's building some follicles. She was only around like seven, eight millimeters, so no, no rush there. But going back up to this girl, this girl right here was around 10 to 12 millimeters last night when we ultrasounded. And she, if you're familiar and you're up to date with the videos, when we did this video, I guess you could say, or the um, ultrasounding on YouTube Live, I think it was two, two and a half weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, she had zero, zero follicles. <laughs> zero. <laughs> she had no follicles and... Um, you know, we were. I was kind of bummed. I was like, you know, dang, I really hope she goes. You know, she's been pounding food. I think she'll go, but I wasn't sure. Sure enough, ultrasound of there, and now again, she has 10 to 12 millimeter follicles. So I was like, all right, cool. That is freaking huge because to me, this could be the most anticipated clutch of the season for the clown project for us um, if we can get the stranger going. So anyway, pulled her out. Um, checked the mail over here. You know that I showed you guys the spot nose yellow belly stranger, and uh, went ahead and popped him to pull a casting out so he was definitely producing some sperm which is amazing like i said before i'm almost 99 percent sure i witnessed a lock his first ever lock with this pastel clown girl um i posted on instagram you guys can take a look but it was kind of hard to see the female was kind of choking him out honestly but it really did look like they were locked up like i you know i'm 99 percent sure you know and i've been doing it for three seasons now i can pretty much tell when you see a lock just by the characteristics of how the snakes are wrapped up and whatnot um, and I'm almost 99% sure that that was a lock. Um, and it kind of helped me see that I pulled a casting from him last night. So we pulled a casting from him, popped him, and we actually rubbed it on the uh, underside of this high OD fire clown girl. If you guys don't know, it's a, it's kind of an old school breeder trick. You basically take a casting from uh, any male, you know, that you have, and then basically rub it on the female that you're trying to pair. It doesn't have to be the exact, you know, male that's going to that female. Like, I mean, I've seen people... Let's just say, for instance, pull a casting from this pastel super GHI chocolate head clown, and he's not pairing right now, but he's got, you know, he's producing sperm. Put it on the, let's just quote unquote say the high OD fire clown, then throw the stranger in, and it usually jump starts the locks, you know, for that for that other male. But haven't looked yet, guys. Have not looked. I wanted to record this video on the um, Osmo 3 to kind of see the how smooth it is. I'm super, super pumped about this thing. Um, it's just super easy. You know, I can change it back and forth, give you guys some better perspective now. You know, now that I've been doing the videos for a little while, I'm more comfortable showing my face, even though I really don't like being the, I guess, quote unquote, highlight of the video. Um, as far as me just showing my face talking, I don't mind it now. Um, you know, I understand that sometimes you guys want a perspective as far as somebody speaking, so I'll try my best. But we're going to open this tub up right now. We're going to see what the heck we have. I really hope they're locked up. Nope, not a lock. Definitely not a lock. Well, that's not good, but he's definitely back on top of her. As you see, he's in the very back corner. Uh, I'm not going to disturb him because they've only been in here for about 10 hours. So, you know, being a new male, uh, it's one of those things he's probably not going to lock up within the first day. Um, I will say, so on the note of him locking up, he was in the tub with this pastel clown female. Um, it's in shed right now. She's about to shed out. But um, he was in the tub with her for two and a half days before he actually, um, you know, I witnessed a 99% sure lock. So it took him a while. You know, he's still not necessarily um, got the hang of it, obviously, um, because when I throw in, let's just say, for instance, I throw in this double hit monsoon clown male down here. I throw him in with any of these girls. Um, let's just take, for example, this uh, ivory hit monsoon girl right here that you guys see. I throw him in with her. Within six hours, he's locked up, and he's you know he's locking her up for 24 hours plus. Um, that lock that we saw there, um, that I'm pretty sure I witnessed, was only about a 10 hour lock. You know, so it's not the greatest. But at the end of the day, I cannot stress you guys enough. When you're working with you know newer males, I don't care if the male's a thousand grams and he's never locked before, or if he's 400 grams and he's locking. You have to introduce him to females. You have to introduce. 
Um, as much as you just want to, you know, slap him in the hole back rack like this and keep feeding him and feeding him and feeding him and letting him take those months break, you know, and, and kind of put on some size, you you guys, it does not matter. You know, you can have a 1,500 gram male and the male not want to lock up, okay? They're animals. It's nature. I don't care how, um, you know, how you have them, what kind of racks you have, um, you know, it doesn't matter at all if they're gonna lock when they want to lock um, it doesn't matter on age obviously you know there's people out there that successfully breed and produce clutches from males that are you know less than six months old there's also people myself included that have had snakes that are three years old that have not locked yes they eventually lock I've never had a male not lock but it takes time so for me I introduce that male to these females like it's just another male another female I don't care about the size as long as they're six months old and up, you know, and they've got good size, they're not going to, you know, uh, it's not going to hurt them for a lock, I start introducing, you know, and I will say next season, this next season coming up, I am going to purchase um, two females from somebody that I trust, because obviously we don't have a quarantine room yet, a quote unquote actual quarantine room, we're going to buy two females that are probably just heck clown females, you know, something very cheap, you know, probably $100, $200 a piece, and we're going to put them in one of these rack systems, and we're going to use those females as test females. Okay, we're going to buy proven girls because proven girls obviously are going to know how to get it done. Um, they're going to be able to help the younger males per se, and basically um, they're going to be over there. So, for instance, this you know yellow belly spot no stranger heck clown posset monsoon boy. He hasn't quote unquote quote unquote locked yet that I know 100. percent He's producing sperm. He's ready to go. He's to size. He's a thousand grams. Um, instead of pairing to females that I really want clutches from, and I'm like banking on having at least a six egg clutch or, or more healthy eggs, I'm going to throw him to those two girls. And then who, whatever happens, I don't care about that clutch. You know, I can just sell those um, or wholesale them or whatever I want because that's not the purpose of those two females. Those two females are used basically to jumpstart the males. You know, so any small males we have, let's just say we had a, a combo monsoon that comes back at clown this next season you know we want to breed that animal obviously but we also don't want to breed it to let's just say an ivory hit monsoon female right off the rip because let's be honest when you're breeding a um a smaller male you know your chances of having a quote-unquote healthy full complete healthy clutch are very very slim you know off the first lock it could be a dry lock or it could be a partial lock you know it could be um that he only you know can fertilize two eggs out of the 10 that she's going to actually lay. So that's why I'm going to be doing that. And that's another tip for you guys. If you're really taking it seriously, um, I'm going to do what I'm telling you. And we'll, we'll kind of document the series as we go because that, to me, is going to be huge. Um, but, again, we're back to, you know, throwing in your males with your females. You know, and that just comes down to what, what are you comfortable with because if that male's first lock is to your most powerful female, like, for instance, Ivory Hit Monsoon, you know, are you okay with him only being able to fertilize two out of the 10 eggs? Or are you going to spend the extra $200 and the extra rats that it takes to feed and space to buy two, you know, quote unquote, worthless females that you really don't care if they lay a clutch or not, but they're going to be able to kind of train that male and give him those first few locks that he needs um, to, you know, start, start producing that viable sperm. Okay. So, you know, that's what we're going to be doing, but I'm, I'm being, um, for me, you know, I don't have that luxury right now. I don't have the females. So we're introducing this male to these females early. Um, that way, hopefully by, you know, I don't know, March, April of this next year, when these, when the bulk of these females start to start to really produce those really, really heavy, heavy duty follicles, you know, those 25 millimeter plus follicle ranges, he's already locking, you know, he's healthy. He's producing, you know, 24, 36 hour locks and he's good to go. So, you know, I'm going to quit rambling because I can do it all day, but you guys get the gist of it. Be really careful. Um, don't wait until the, you know, until your females at 40 millimeters or 35 millimeters to start pairing your, your uh, first time male that you're going to throw to these females. It's just not, not smart. Okay. Um, so that being said, guys, this video is right at 15 minutes long. I'm telling you this Osmo is freaking insane. The quality just looks insane from me watching the screen. Um, I think there's two more small clips of locks that I'm going to throw into this video before this. But I think this is going to go ahead and be the video as far as no more uh, clips after this video. Um, so, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, please like, comment, share, subscribe. It means the world. This channel is growing far beyond what I thought this channel could grow. You know, 
I've wanted to start a YouTube channel since I was a kid. I'm 24 now, and you know, I'm so thankful that I got brought back into the reptile scene. I had 25 plus snakes when I was a kid, ball pythons. You know, never knew that I could actually somewhat, hopefully, someday turn this into a viable business slash company um, and, and be able to give you guys videos on how to do things and how my journey has gone so far. Um, again, thank you so much, guys. Um, like I said, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, check out my Instagram at Hook'em Rolls if you want to enter into the 500, um, 500 follower giveaway. We're at like 440, I think, right now. So it's two free snakes, shipping's included. Basically, there's no reason not to. So go check it out, guys, and we will see you in the next video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this this um, this clip with this get, with this new Osmo 3. It's so freaking. I'm just excited for the future, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.